Hey guys, it's Spartan Jess. And you know what? Today is a special day because I get to show off and announce to you the third installment of the products and tutorial series. Now, we got a lot to go over today whenever it comes to updates from the past episodes of the series to the different kind of segments that are going to be in this video specifically. So first, we'll go into the updates. Second, we'll go into the tutorials. And third, well, we'll get into the products, and there's a lot of them. But before we continue into the video, if you guys would like to find out how to win one of the brand new Foundry Airsoft Magnums, uh, stick around to the end of the video to learn more information about this. Now with all that out of the way, let's get into the video that you all have been waiting to watch. Now for the beginning of our update segment, let's start off with Master Lehmans. The guy who's known for making a couple of Halo Airsoft armor pieces, mostly helmets, chest pieces, shoulder pieces, etc. He's disappeared from Etsy due to conflicts that have been happening around the world recently, and unfortunately his page has been kind of struck down from Etsy. So they've moved all their products onto a website called Crelandia? Crelandia? I don't know. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. It seems like with everything about Master Lehmans, I just kind of mispronounce everything. I've been calling him Master Lemons. And now I'm not really sure if I'm pronouncing that website right, but oh well, let's move on. Here you can see that he's got a couple of new additions. Um, he's got a Master Chief helmet, he still has his ODST helmets, and he also has a new Halo Marine helmet, and a couple of different variety of colors, and the same goes for all of his other helmets that he has on his Crelandia website. So if you're still interested in Master Lehman's work, make sure to go check it out. Now let's move on to Printing Revolution and the update status of their Etsy page. Now it turns out Printing Revolution is also alchemy from my previous products and tutorials video. You know, the segment where I show off one of the Magnum kits made for an AEP model. Eventually he moved that Magnum kit onto his Etsy page. What's cool is you can actually add electrical components into this Magnum kit as well. I thought that was pretty interesting. And looking at the other products that Printing Revolution has made, a while ago they announced that they were making ODST gear, and now to this day it's on his shop. They've also created a showcase video displaying the ODST gear in cinematic fashion. And surprisingly, the set of armor has a ton of positive reviews, so that's a great sign of the product's value. But they don't just have ODST armor, they also have a marine helmet. So if you're looking for a quality marine bucket, well, Printing Revolution has one. And that's not the only marine style looking helmet that they have. Moving on from their Etsy page, they also have a Shopify page. And on there, they have an exclusive New Mombasa Police Department set. So if you're interested, make sure to go check that out. And one of the final things I wanted to mention about Printing Revolution is that they're designing their own Halo Reach grenade launcher. So with all that being mentioned for Printing Revolution, make sure to go check out all their stuff. Now let's get into some of the pages and people that have been missing in action. 39 bullets. An Etsy page that used to produce a bunch of sci-fi airsoft helmets has unfortunately disappeared. Headhunter Airsoft 3D, the Etsy page that used to produce Magnum kits for the MK23, is no longer on Etsy anymore as well. Glendon Chan, no, no longer does SMG commissions. Oh, that hurts, but I respect it. And finally, we have Foundry Airsoft, who thankfully is still around. They're no longer on Etsy, however. Ever since Etsy updated their policies about, I guess, quote-unquote, firearm-related products being sold on their website, Foundry Airsoft was one of the Etsy pages that got taken down due to these new policies. So at the moment, they're in the process of creating their brand new Magnum kits that are injection-molded, can accommodate tracer units in the SOCOM variant, and overall, the whole kit is adaptable to all Gen 17, 18, and 19 Airsoft Glock variants. So these Magnums have great improvements to them, and they will be releasing very soon. So if you want to keep in touch about more information about Foundry Airsoft, make sure to keep watching their Instagram page. And oh, what's this? Looks like a collaboration with yours truly. I'll be talking more about that at the end of the video. Now with the update segment out of the way, let's get into the tutorials. Now let's first start off with Gabbler32. This is the guy who helped me create my own Airsoft MA40, just by showing tutorials about how he did his. So his method of conversion was to place a gas blowback airsoft pistol into the back of a Nerf MA40. And ever since then, he has about three or four videos showcasing all the different versions of his MA40 build process. His most recent video showcases his third version of the black and gold color scheme, representing the one from the first Call of Duty Black Ops game. If you'd like to see a little bit more about the origins of the gas blowback MA40 conversion, make sure to go check out Gabbler32. Staying on the same topic of the MA40, Zero Setanta has created a short tutorial of how to place an AEG Airsoft M4 into the Nerf MA40. This is essentially the same method that the Mangy Mutt showed me how to do in my recent MA40 tutorial. 
but if you wanted to see a more quicker version of the actual run through and build process of the AEG ma 40 make sure to go check out this video. Now let's move on to Mizria Forge's 405th DMR thread, where he goes into pretty specific detail about how his progress has been so far with building his custom DMR by having the KJW KCO2 as a main platform for the build with a variety of internal upgrades. He designed it in a way to where he could bullpup it and place it into the back of the DMR design. He bought his own lathe or at least a newer version for himself, just for this project. He used a lathe for the muzzle brake and the outer barrel, and the DMR is a combination of PLA, 3D printed material, and metal parts. The handguard is made out of stainless flat bar, and the DMR has additional metal Picatinny rails. With plans to incorporate the Tycon ammo counter, and to finish the body up with a Cerakote, this project is definitely looking up, becoming a really fascinating one, from a custom build perspective. You're probably going to see a lot more about this project in the future. So if you'd like to see the thread for yourself, make sure to check the link in the description. Now with another 405th post coming up, we have the one and only Redshirt98, with his continued Airsoft Nika Needler conversion. And with knowing him, you can already assume that he's going to try to make this as accurate to the game as possible. With recently adding a fiberglass interior layer into the Needler, making it a lot more durable for Airsoft Impact, working his hardest to make sure that the Needlers fully contract into the body of the Needler, and he also plans to make this Needler HPA powered, by putting the tank at the bottom grip of the Needler. And the best part about this whole project, that it's a literal aimbot. That Redshirt98 is planning to install a radar scanning system. So depending on wherever you are in front of the needler, the barrel will adjust to a moving player in front of it. Redshirt has been working on this Nika needler for a while now, and the 405th thread is a very good read, showing his whole build process of this fascinating Covenant weapon. He's recently uploaded a update video about the fiberglass edition, but if you want to keep more up to date about this project, Redshirt is a lot more active in this build thread, so I definitely recommend giving it a good read. Now moving away from the 405th post, but still retaining the Covenant weaponry topic, we have Iron Fox and his video showcase of his Covenant Airsoft Armory, where he displays a quick tutorial about how he built all these custom airsoft guns. The first being the plasma pistol, with the MK1 being the airsoft platform, the mini carbine, with the MK1 rifle being the platform, plasma rifle being an AEP Glock, and the Needler, which is the AEP SEMA M9. Iron Fox is another fellow Halo airsofter, it's pretty underrated whenever it comes to videos like this. One thing to keep in mind is that he is French, but thankfully he activated subtitles on his videos so others can understand what he's saying. And you know what? Now that I'm thinking about it, I should probably do the same. <laughs> So if you'd like to learn how to make some pretty simplistic Covenant Airsoft builds, make sure to go check out Iron Fox's YouTube channel. Now having another member of the Halo Airsoft community join us here today, we have Parzival, who's kind of known in the community for owning a ton of CB88s, and he's worked on a lot of them on his spare time. So he kind of knows these platforms like the back of his hand. He has also created a couple of unedited walkthroughs of most of the CB88 assembly process. And also, if you do have any CB88s that you would like to have repaired and whatnot, Parzival will be more than happy to take them off your hands and repair them for you. In the future, he's going to be helping me with the updated version of how to repair the CB88. So make sure to keep an eye out for that partnered video. And if you would like to see more videos about the assembly process of the CB88, make sure you go check out Parzival's YouTube channel. And for a very last second edition, Tactical ODST has shared with us his suppressed SMG made out of an AAP-01. You're going to see a lot of AAP-01 love in this video, so be prepared for that. By using a mix of parts acquired from Etsy and a couple of Action Army accessories like the Nupro Folding Grip and ASG Strike RDS, he had to work the outer body addition onto the AAP-01 because it wasn't provided with any screws, and Tactical ODST had to do a little bit of sanding in order to attach it to the platform. So if you're looking for a very simple way to create an Airsoft SMG, Go look up Tactical ODST's Instagram for any more information about this build. And finally, for our tutorial segment of the video, Winley Creations has made his own Airsoft Halo Reach AR by constructing the body completely by himself, putting an AEG in the back of the body, and having the gun being top-fed where the ammo counter is located. I personally don't get on TikTok at all, but if you guys would like to see this short showcase of the Halo Reach AR build, make sure to go check it out. I'd also like to say that just about all these tutorials came from the Halo Airsoft groups, most notably 
respectively the Facebook and the Discord group. So if you'd like to see more of these projects, make sure to come and join. I'll leave the links to the Discord and Facebook groups in the description below. And now we finally get into the product section of the video. Now for the first phase of the products, we're mostly going to be going into information about Colts 3D, because there's been a lot of Halo Airsoft related 3D printable files that have been showing up there recently. And I just want to state this because I do know not everybody in the world has a 3D printer. I'll be once again vouching for Alpha to Zeta Industries for any 3D printing services. So if any of you guys are interested in some of the things I'm about to mention 3D file wise, but you're not able to print it yourself, make sure to acquire the 3D file that you're interested in and contact Alpha to Zeta through either their Facebook page, Instagram, or Etsy page. They'll be more than happy to help you out. And to start off our product section, let's look into Reese Davies' Magnum Kit for the AAP-01. Now, Reese Davies is mainly known for creating 3D files for other franchises like Star Wars and whatnot, but this is the one Halo-related 3D file that they have on their Colts 3D. They also have a showcase video on YouTube basically displaying the Magnum in action. Next up, we got Master Maker 11's FN-2000 Halo Assault Rifle Top Shroud. Originally created for Iron Fox, Master Maker 11 decided to put the design up onto Colts 3D. So if you'd want one for yourself, look up Master Maker 11. Incompetent hack has designed a very simplistic SMG file for the AAP-01. They also have a very short showcase video on YouTube as well. If you'd like a very simplified SMG, go check out Incompetent Hack. And with a roster of four different kinds of magnums on this Colts 3D page, we have PJ Works. First being a slide and frame kit for the Glock 17 Gen 3. The second also being a slide and frame kit, but for the Glock 19. The third kit being another Glock 19 kit, but without the slide and frame. And the final magnum file being designed for the AAP-01. And now we have McCool Studio Designs with his HBA BR-75. Now he has 3D files for this BR on his Etsy page and his Colts 3D page. McCool also has a tutorial video showing how to install the airsoft internals into the body of his 3D design. So it's definitely worth checking out if you're interested in getting this HBA BR. The design was specifically made for the HBA M4 and they also left some space for a future ammo counter integration if demand is high enough for these BRs. For McCool's personal use of his BR-75, he placed a Wolverine Gen 2 Inferno with a Spartan trigger board as part of the internals for his gun. That's not the only BR style project that McCool Studios has been working on. They've been designing what's called a BR-75T, a battle rifle that's more realistic in nature whenever it comes to performance and handling. I'd keep an eye on McCool Studios if you're more interested in his battle rifle projects. You'll probably see some collaboration videos with him and I as well. 3D BB Designs is known for his airsoft grenade launcher that can launch any kind of 40mm grenades and tag rounds. They've been in the Halo Airsoft community for a while now showcasing their build process of this grenade launcher and a good amount of people have showed some positive feedback to it. 3D BB Designs also has a disassembly video going through how to essentially build and take apart the grenade launcher. They've also kindly gave me a copy of their grenade launcher, but pretty soon you'll see a video of me assembling the grenade launcher and using it in action. Lulu Crafting Girl has created her own little small arsenal of Halo Airsoft gear. First being her Magnum kit for the Glock 19, 23, or 32. The Halo Reach shotgun design for the Marui Breacher. The SMG for the High Kappa. And Lulu Craft's brand new design, the BR-85, designed for a High Kappa as well. Lulu Crafting Girl is another underrated Halo Airsofter that's been active on Instagram and uploads her designs onto Colts 3D. And note that all four of these designs aren't on her Colts 3D page quite yet, but she is uploading them very soon. So if you'd like to see any more future designs being uploaded, make sure to follow her on Instagram. I'm sure she'd appreciate it. And the last page standing for the 3D cult section is Airsoft R&D. Let me tell you, this is a special one. Airsoft R&D has a wide variety of Halo Airsoft 3D files. Whether it comes to his M90 shotgun cosmetic kit, his set of magnums for the AAP-01, being the M6, the SOCOM, and the M6C. And Airsoft R&D doesn't just have his 3D cults page. He also has his own website, where he sells not just the 3D files, but also commission kits if you don't want to go through the process of building it yourself. Yourself. They also have their own Halo Reach grenade launcher. And the very first airsoft spinker. This thing looks awesome. <laughs> I mean, have you ever seen anybody dual wielding two Halo airsoft rocket launchers? I mean, come on. And that's not the only thing up airsoft R&D's sleeve. They also plan to 
release a couple of Covenant Airsoft weapons as well, with the Covenant Carbine almost being done with production, and, per my personal request, the Airsoft Needler Rifle. So if you'd like to check out any of Airsoft R&D's wide variety of Halo Airsoft guns, or if you'd like him to commission some for you, make sure to go check them out. Now, moving away from the 3D file section, I would like to point out that the rest of our products coming up are all going to be located on Etsy. If you would like to attach ammo counters onto Halo Airsoft props, I'd recommend checking out Westby Electronics for their easy to assemble custom ammo counters. Whether you need one for your custom MA40 or a battle rifle, these are pretty simple to put together and attach them to your builds. I've used two of the Westby Electronic ammo counters for my older Boomco MA5B conversion and now my recent MA40 conversion. So if this sparks your interest, make sure to go contact Westby Electronics. Next, we have Mail Modeling Studios, who has an M6C and SOCOM Magnum 3D file, and most notably, an ODST rugsack, based off the ODST backpack design from the live-action ODST trailer. You have a couple of options for durability, so if you're going for the Airsoft version, make sure to select that whenever you're checking out the options. This might be a bit of heresy for us Halo Airsofters, but I think some of their work is pretty interesting. Oni Labs has developed a pretty decent lineup for Halo paintball and airsoft gear. They have some really cool kits like the paintball SMG and some Halo looking weapon attachments that can be put onto Picatinny rails. They also have armor that you can attach onto your chest rig if you like as well, like this Halo Reach Spartan chest piece. Currently Oni Labs is working on a marine helmet and also a Halo Infinite line breaker helmet. Most recently I've actually ran into one of their custom elite helmets. That looks pretty sweet. Most of their work is commissioned, so I recommend contacting Oni Labs for anything essentially specific. The MKSM Shop has a large variety of cosplay or airsoft proof helmets. Now, I've been told strongly by some people in the community that these helmets have some very good quality build to them. Now, with their selection of helmets that you could get from their Etsy store, you can get a raw set, a raw kit, or a straight up completed helmet. All the details about these selections are in the description, and you can request helmet sizes. You just gotta make sure to contact them beforehand. They also have a full set of ODST gear, prep for cosplay or airsoft. So if you're interested, I'd definitely check them out. And finally, for our last presentation for the Halo Airsoft Products and Tutorials Episode 3, we have Spark Armory Workshop, who straight up creates full metal ODST gear. If you want to talk about fully airsoft proof armor, well, an entire ODST kit made out of aluminum could definitely do the job. All custom made for each purchase, Spark Armory cuts and forms all these aluminum pieces, whether it being the chest plate, the shoulder, back plate, and elbow plates. And fewer plates can be made on a request. These kits are specifically designed onto an airsoft plate carrier and shoulder pads. Spark Armory Workshop has just recently started this whole thing, and it does look like some individual pieces are being sold, like the chest plate. Now, it can be a bit expensive, but justifiably so, because after all, these are custom-made aluminum armor pieces. If you'd like to help support Spark Armory Workshop, make sure to go give his Etsy page a look. And with all that research finally being finished, we come to the conclusion of our video. Now, unfortunately, I had to cut a couple of things because I wasn't completely sure if they were airsoft related and the video was getting long enough as it is. But hey, if there's anything that I've missed to put into this video, let me know down in the comment section below. And everything that I just mentioned will be in the description of this video. So don't worry about going out and trying to search for all this yourself. And if you decided to stick around for the end of the video to learn about how to win a brand new Foundry Airsoft Magnum, um, well, that event is actually part of my brand new Spartan Jest Patreon, where the supporters of this YouTube channel are eligible to win unique prizes just like this. I go a lot more into detail about this in my recent Future of the Channel video, but to keep it more simplified, every couple months I'm going to be hosting what we call a Brethren Raffle. It's essentially a raffle perk that only the final tier in my Patreon can attend in, which is called the Spartan Brethren. I have other tiers on my Patreon as well. For those that don't specifically want to be a Spartan Brethren, like the Rat Enthusiast, Noble Marine, Hell Jumper. Graciously donated by Foundry Airsoft, the brand new injection molded Magnum will be obtainable at the time of recording this video at the end of this month. If you'd like to participate in the very first Brethren raffle, consider becoming one of my Spartan Brethren. Or, if not, then any support is welcome. After all, the Patreon does fuel content like this. And with all that being said, I'd just like to say thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe, and don't forget, this is truly Combat Evolved.